In this screencast I'm going to explain the differences between monitor events and locking situations and how the various monitor views are interconnected. This is a continuation of the last screencast so you may have a look at the last blog entry to check what the test program that I'm profiling here actually does. In this case it's not a live session, it's a snapshot that I've saved to disk after the test program had completed. There are two different perspectives from which you can analyze monitors. One is by looking at single monitors and single events um, and the duration that is associated with those events. And then you end up with this table here in the monitor history view. Here you can see each line involves one monitor. In this case it's always the same monitor with ID 1 and here you can see a duration column. Each event takes um, a particular amount of time. This table is chronological only for the start times of those monitor events. The monitor events can overlap and there is only uh, a simple analysis of um, relationships here. There's a waiting thread and an owning thread. There could be more threads that are waiting for this monitor but um, uh, that is not possible to see in this table here. Um, the other perspective is um, you focus on single moments in time where interesting things happen and uh, show all monitors and all threads that are involved and uh, that's what the locking history graph does. Here you can see relationships between uh, threads and monitors. There is uh, no notion of duration here uh, only relationships, but um, each graph shows all involved uh, threads and monitors. So the locking history graph and the monitor history view complement each other. It's actually quite easy to jump back and forth between the monitor history view and the locking history graph. For example, here let's select the second event in the table where thread 3 is waiting for this monitor and uh, thread 1 is the owner and to jump to the locking history graph we right click and select show selection in locking history graph and it takes us to the start time of the monitor event. Now the relationship of the monitor event is evident here as well. Thread 3 is blocked on this monitor and thread 1 is the owner for it. However you can also see that there is another thread that is also blocking on this very same monitor. If we mouse over the um, ownership arrow of thread 1 we can see that there are actually two events that thread 1 is in, involved in and uh, there is a combo box that shows the start times of those monitor events and with that combo box you can select those monitor events. Now in this pop-up there are two links that take you away from this particular graph. One is this show link here that um, um, navigates inside the locking history graph just takes you to a, a different time the start time of, of the selected monitor event the other is the show in monitor history link that takes you back to the monitor history and shows you the selected monitor event let's click that link and um, here we go this is the first um, event in this table where thread 2 is waiting and thread 1 is already the owner of the monitor. There's another very interesting way to navigate to the monitor history and to the locking history graph and that is from the threads history view. Let's go there. And what you can do here is to mouse over the thread status lines. You could be wondering why is this thread blocking for so long and what you get is uh, these kind of pop-ups, the very same pop-ups that you get in the locking history graph and that show you the monitor event that is currently in progress under the mouse cursor. This only works um, if you have recorded monitor events. If you have not recorded monitor events you will get a pop-up that will tell you how to turn it on. And just like in the pop-ups in the locking history graph you get two links one link takes you to the uh, locking history graph uh, and the other link takes you to the uh, monitor history view. The last cross link that I would like to mention in this screencast is a link into the heap walker. If you would like to find out more about monitor objects you can um, right click 
monitor events in the monitor history view or right click uh, monitor nodes in the locking history graph and choose show selection in Heapwalker and it will take you to the Heapwalker and select the monitor object um, as the current object set and now you can find out uh, how monitor objects are referenced or where they have been allocated uh, this is all very simple in this uh, test program but uh, it will be really helpful in figuring out complex real-world scenarios.